Uh, we all witnessed it this week when CNN reported that Intel chiefs, actually let's quote the headline here, Intel chiefs presented Trump with claims of Russian efforts to compromise him. These claims came partly from a former British intelligence agent's 35-page dossier. CNN did not print it or quote from it, but BuzzFeed did. Uh, the big news site BuzzFeed, even though this memo is full of unverified allegations, some of them known to be false. Was this a violation of journalistic ethics? Some media critics supported BuzzFeed, but many, many did not. So joining me now for an exclusive Sunday morning interview about this is Ben Smith, the editor-in-chief of the website. Ben, you made the call uh, when this happened. Do you regret it now a few days later? Do you have any regrets about publishing this entire document? No, absolutely not. We're proud we published it, and I feel three days later it seems clear that it was the right thing to do if you look at how much more we know than we knew three days ago, and I think in three months it'll look even clearer. What is it more that we know now that you believe justifies the decision? We know this saga that dozens of journalists, intelligence officials, elected leaders knew of a, British, of a, Brit a former British spy cre creating this document, handing it over to the FBI, John McCain handing it to the FBI, of briefings which Jake Tapper and your team got an amazing scoop on, of the CIA briefing the president and the president elected. This is really of an incredible fight at the highest levels of U.S. power, but away from the eyes of the American people over this document and over the claims that, as in the headline you showed, the claims that CNN and many, many other outlets reported and repeated. And I, I guess our, our call was that the, in the first instance, it, once you have the document, as we did and many did, and we... When did you get a hold of it? I'm not going to say exactly, but weeks before we published it. So you've it. had it for weeks before CNN published it. Yes, and we, story. like you, I think like you, like certainly other outlets who we ran across in the reporting, were staking out, you know, were staking out places where we thought we could get information in Europe, were running it down every way we could. And, and at some point, you know, as Harry Reid is sending a letter based on it, as government and powerful officials are taking little actions based on it, not just, not just sort of seeing it, but acting based on it, I think there becomes an argument, should you print it? We were having that conversation internally. We had not, certainly, we're not close to doing that. But then I think when hmm. w your great scoop puts not just the fact of a document, but claims attributed in your reporting to a source seen as credible, and specific summaries of the claims, into public. I think, I think everybody's obligation then is to say, well, here are the actual claims. We're well, not just going to summarize of the claims, them. CNN was very careful not to share those details. No, because what they do you were mean? I saw in that headline, the headline is claims he was compromised by Russian intelligence. That is an incredibly explosive claim. And to say, you and I have here between us a secret document with explosive, dark claims, and we don't, we, you guys on the other side of the camera can't see it, but we can. I don't really understand. I guess I'm sort of interested, actually, in because I, I see the case for reporting it out and not sharing it. I see the case for saying, here are these claims, here is this document at the center of the fight, take a look. I think I actually don't see the case for the middle position. I actually thought, I realize you're not a spokesman for CNN. The middle position and I don't is mean to put journalism. You, no, the, the journalism that we were all doing was, was to try to verify the claims. Once you repeat them and put them out there, but to not share the underlying but the, the documents. the actual claims were not put out there. The story that CNN uh, the published I and the saw, story the New York Times the published said I just that saw. this was a, a topic briefed to the president-elect and that that's what the news was. The headline that you just put up was claims that he was pro compromised by Russian intelligence. But you're conflating these two the way the Trump aides have. What, what you're saying is you all published the claims. No, CNN did not, and neither did the New York Times or the Washington Post or others. That he was compromised. Nobody went into these sordid details, the details that you all put up on the web. I guess we thought that it was important when you have a blanket claim like he was compromised by Russian intelligence to share the details. I think that's important. I think our audience basically at this point expects you, and this is what something you do on the Internet with hyperlinks. You do it by showing your source documents that you can, but the, the default now is if you want your audience to trust you, you, not, you don't just, our job is not to keep primarily to be gatekeepers, to decide what to suppress and keep from our audience. It's primarily to share with our audience what we've got. You, you say suppress. Said, Journalists every day make editing decisions. And this was just an editing choice about not putting uh, completely unverified rumors out onto the Internet. Well, you put some of them on the Internet. You just didn't put the details on the Internet, yes? It, no. What happened from CNN and the New York Times and other outlets is they reported the existence of this concern inside the intelligence community right. and the existence of this briefing. And, and several of the details of it. But in summary, I agree not the most explosive details, but the summary that he had been compromised. And I think that it was worth there was a big difference between saying there are these dark and explosive claims that we're not going to tell you about, and here is the actual thing. I'm not sure reading the thing in our report which said, not only is this unverified, we know there are specific things wrong. I think that's important to put out there and to let people see the underlying document. That said, 
I also think reasonable people can really disagree on this, and they are. Mm. I don't think you are acting like a Trump aide. I don't think I am either. And I think like that's this is a this was a close call. I, I'm not suggesting otherwise. I'm trying to figure out if you all are Washington Post or WikiLeaks. It seems to me you're trying to be both, uh, saying we're going to dump this document online. We don't know if it's real. We don't know. If, you know it's a real document. You don't know the truth. You don't know if the facts in it are true. Uh, or not. That's not what the Washington Post or CNN or the New York Times would do. You all aspire to be one of the world's great news divisions, but aren't you trying to be more like WikiLeaks in this case? We, we are, I think, well within the tradition of um, American journalism, which is every time you use the word alleged on your air, every time you see the word alleged in print or on the web, that is saying we are repeating a claim we can't verify. That is a totally within the standard, particularly of covering law enforcement, but you know, you'll hear that dozens of times on CNN, to maybe dozens, you'll hear that word quite a bit in coverage. And I think for, from our perspective, if you are going to say that, your obligation then, if you've got the, if you've got the indictment, you know, even if you, think it's, even if you think there's lots there that's false, in fact, if you can particularly, if you can point to things that are false, you sh there's, if, you, if I can see it, if it's not mm -hmm. gonna scald my eyes out, I think, I mean, I think it's a question to reasonably ask your audience. If, if I'm up here saying I have a secret document, I'm gonna summarize for it, but I don't, I'm not sure I'm comfortable showing it to you because I'm not sure I can trust you with it. Do you feel uh, it's that not you about shouldn't trusting see it? the reader? I mean, let, let's put on screen what you, what, what you said to the audience the at the time. You said Americans can make up their own minds uh, about allegations about the president-elect that, that have circulated uh, around the intelligence community. But how can Americans or anybody else make up their own minds without providing reporting to them? Without, without. You know, I mean, how I do you expect your readers to make up their own minds? I, I think that what I would say is that I think it's if you are going to report on a document. The presumption is that you share the document with your audience. Let them know what you know. So that's where this is really interesting, right? I, I would say, and I, I think you and I agree on this, uh, big, old-fashioned, established news organizations start from the premise of, why should we share this? Yes. You start from the premise of, why shouldn't we? Why should we suppress this? Yes, that is, that's where I start And you from. use the word suppress. I realize you think that's a little tendential. Uh, it's why okay. shouldn't we share this? But that's but the yes. fundamental, and that's a profound difference that we're describing between legacy media uh, and digital media. I think that's right. So but I don't think it's a difference of values. I think we are trying to best inform our audience, to be true to our audience, to treat our audience with respect. I think you are too. I think these are different traditions of that. But I think that the conflation of that with, with deliberate deception is really inappropriate. We put, that, we put this out with a very clear summary of what it was, where it came from, and that there were, and, and we really stressed that there were false things in this document. You did, but why not publish not a it. full reported explanation to the reader about what you've learned so far, what's false in it, why not help them understand what they were seeing in this memo? I mean, I don't think that you or I or the FBI, apparently, can say with great confidence that, 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 that either they have stood this up or knocked it down. There were some details that we and both I, know and were I do false. Think there's a question, you yes, could have it, annotated that. You could have had did. a lot of redactions. Oh, I see. I mean, I think, right. I think there are levels of how many redactions, of how much annotation. We did point out the things that we really were very, very confident were false, in part to say to the reader, <laughs> Caveat you did a little bit of that. Let's be honest. You rushed this out. You, CNN published, and you published a couple hours later, trying to get this on the internet as fast as possible. I mean, it is both of our jobs to be as fast and as accurate as we can. Accurate and then fast. I think yes, of course. So Sean Spicer and other Trump aides uh, tried to conflate what CNN published and what BuzzFeed published. Let's take a look, actually, at what Sean Spicer said the next day. The fact that BuzzFeed and CNN made the decision to run with this unsubstantiated claim is a sad and pathetic attempt to get clicks. The report is not an intelligence report, plain and simple. Were you trying to just get clicks? I mean, I think Sean quoted me as he continued there and saying it was unverified. And I think, you know, there's obviously an attempt right now to divide the press, to, to turn us on each other, oh, and to turn reasonable differences about editorial decisions into screaming matches between us on this show. And, and, I, and I think that's like probably not, I think that that's, that's a trap that you know, the media has obviously repeatedly fallen into over the last couple of years, but I think it's better not to right now. Okay, well, there's a tension between, yes, there, there are reasons to have unity. On the other hand, as CNN's Jake Tapper said, what you did was irresponsible, and that irresponsible journalism hurts us all. I wouldn't say it was irresponsible to say, we have here a secret document, we're not gonna share it. I would disagree with that, but I think it's a reasonable call. So it's not possible to have unity in the press corps uh, if BuzzFeed's acting more like WikiLeaks, just dumping material on the internet and telling the audience to decide if it's true or not. I think we reported a very important story about that was reporting, a development. Reporting, just published. There's a difference between publishing and reporting. We just explained the origin of the document. We described the, the extent to which it was accurate and inaccurate. 
and we shared information that was being that by the way that not just the, you know the head of the CIA that dozens if not hundreds of mm -hmm. journalists intelligence officials elected leaders were seeing and acting on and I do think when you have a document in that kind of circulation among the country's elites at the center of an incredibly heated political battle the argument for keeping it away from the American people has to be really really strong I'm glad we're talking about this because I, I think for the audience at home it's it's hopefully educational and, yeah, and I think they should, and, I, and I would if I were Let them me. ask themselves do I not want to see this do I not feel that I am responsible? Do I not feel that I can handle the notion that this document is not verified, that I can't trust the claims in it, but that it is this document at the center of this fight? Let me give you one more example to kind of frame this. In 2013, you wrote about a decision not to go with a story about allegations of prostitutes and a U.S. senator. This was a Democratic U.S. senator. You, you decided not to go with it specifically because it wasn't verified. Uh, here, here's what you wrote at the time. Stanton, McKay, Coppins, and I felt more or less vindicated in making the traditional don't touch it call when the story appeared to fall apart or at least got murkier in a way that stories based on the testimonies of anonymous prostitutes in foreign countries are vulnerable to. Now, now this 35-page memo also has uh, lots of uh, anonymous information, unverified information. What's the difference now? Is the difference that Donald Trump's a Republican? No, the main difference is CNN initially's great scoop that the President of the United States and the President-elect were being briefed on that document. Had, had, had this document, had the, I think, the, I think, you know, I'm actually not going to mention the case because I don't want to get it wrong, but right. I'm pretty sure I know which, which U.S. Senator we're talking about here, had, had that document been picked up by the FBI and briefed to the President of the United States, I think it would have been inappropriate of us to say, but we're not going to show it to you. Hmm. Uh, has anyone from And, and I guess Trump's conversely, you and I get email every day making outlandish charges against people hmm. and with, that are not widely circulated among the American elites that, so that, that U.S. The senators are not acting on. Senators, intelligence officials, and journalists all had this. Not just seeing it, but acting on it. Acting People on are making it. decisions based on it. Has anyone from Trump's transition team or the Trump organization threatened to sue BuzzFeed this week? Um, you know, I'm, I guess I'm not, I'm not always sure that I can identify on Twitter who specifically works for, the, uh, for Trump and his transition. You're saying you've received tweets from people I've gotten a threatening lot of, to sue. I've gotten tweets, uh, many, many tweets this week. But no letter, no legal letter from any authority? No. I, I ask because there's been threaten, uh, threats of suits in the past, but we haven't seen that from Trump this week. It's also a tradition that you don't report on lawsuits. A, I think now discarded American journalistic tradition of not reporting on lawsuit threats before they've been filed. But no, there haven't, but there, no, there haven't been any. Do you worry or do you care that publishing this sort of inoculated Donald Trump, that it conflated all these news outlets and allowed him to just dismiss it entirely by calling you a failing pile of garbage? I mean, I, I saw this, you know, I really didn't understand this. I saw that evening and the next morning people saying, you know, this was the moment after two and a half years of really getting totally rolled by Donald Trump and in many cases apologizing for coverage of Donald Trump, that this was the morning that we were going to, this was the morning the media was going to turn it around and really do a fantastic job and hold him to account and had only BuzzFeed not publish this. And I really do think that's, I mean, that's a fantasy. What's the BuzzFeed model for covering Trump going forward? Because you, you wrote a really interesting memo last, week, last month to your staff saying practically every story now, all, it all comes back to Trump. All roads lead back to Trump. What's your strategy for covering Trump in the weeks and months ahead? First, I would say I don't think it all comes back to Trump. I think it all comes back to a broader, we're, very, we're a global organization with reporters all over the place in the UK and France. And I think it comes back to this broader kind of rise of, a, of global nationalism. And that's, that's sort of the story that I feel like is, is at the center of things. But really, you know, I think we planned, we, I feel I'm really proud of how we covered him all through the campaign, which is we were fair, we were tough. We didn't, and, and, and I think we never engaged in the kind of fantasy of, you know, the Trump pivot that he was mm. somebody other than he was going to be. And I think we also reckoned with, as you do, this very challenging fact that his, he and his spokespeople say things that aren't true all the time. And I think you have to gauge that very directly. So I think we plan to continue to cover him like that. Buzz, he was blacklisted for much of the campaign. We were, the, we were the charter. Outlets were not member. given press credentials. Do you expect that in the White House? I don't know. I mean, I'm certainly, we have not had any trouble covering Donald Trump since about October. And last June, Trump told me, no, he will not, if he's elected president, be banning reporters from the press briefing room. Uh, however, now we're five days away. We'll see what happens. Yep.